uh, my name is Emin. Uh, so let, let me give you a meta talk, talk first. La, la, two years ago, when I was in Post Asia, I saw this Apache Zeppelin presentation by Alex. Uh, he's also around here. He's doing something else now. And then when I saw it, uh, it's 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 I ca it's kind of clicked with with what we want to do because it it was filling in the gaps that I had filled doing doing data science uh, doing data science in science in my company. So I wanted to talk about how this this fits into our model and how we, we, we leveraged uh, a JVM-based language Spark to uh, do data science. So to, to give you more context, let me start with a little bit about me. I'm, so I want to, to put, uh, this is my identity information, you can, you can uh, contact me later. I'm a computer engineer and a data miner. Uh, so it's sti still a thing, so I, I get degrees on, on both of them. So I'm, I'm, you can say that I'm a very hardcore engineer, and, um, but now I'm, I'm doing data science. I, this is my title, Full Stack Data Wrangler, which means that I can get my own title in my company, <laughs> which is a nice thing. But what, what, what I do is I, I uh, work on every aspect of the company. So I, I do DevOps, I do engineering, I do data science, I, I do the modeling. So um, that, that, that's why we, we, we try to keep everything everything uh, co compact. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I always prefer tabs, but now I'm comfortable with, with two spaces. And I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Python. Uh, probably there are a lot of Python developers here, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's too, 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 too easy for me. I, it's, it's kind of annoying how easy it is to use Python. And to give you more context, uh, I will talk a little bit about the company. Uh, I, I will keep it for, for the context, no worries. I don't have 10 minute videos to, to show. So we, we have two main products. One of them is network planning. That's what I'm currently working on. And we have also mobility intelligence. Uh, which means if you have X, Y, Z data, so location and time domain, we can give you in insights out of them. And we also have APIs. Uh, the, the company is called DataSpark. You can, you can find it online if you want to use APIs. Our entire stack is on uh, free open source software. It's mostly uh, Apache based, uh, cloud installation. It, we try to keep everything close. Uh, and we deploy our product in weirdest environments, okay? I, I, I will go into more detail in more, more later, but uh, most of our comp uh, customers are enterprise customers. And, and some, sometimes we have to Work, work on weird rooms with, with weird access rules. I, I, I will get into that, but just, just to give you the, the context. And since these are products, what, what we develop has to be maintained a few years. So I still have to maintain a code from two years ago, three years ago, which, which, which is a big pain if, you, if the, 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 the developer has already left the company. So that's why we, we try to keep everything compact and, and what we do from data science to the product, we, we want to streamline the process. Um, and yeah, just a fact, the, the data volume we, we process, we, we get can be up to one terabyte a day, which we don't always use, but we have to be scalable. Uh, so I want to learn a little bit more about you so that I can maybe uh, tune uh, the presentation. Who does data science here? Show hands, please. Okay, good. Uh, who develops products, like, like develop and then deploy at the end somewhere? Okay, good. And who is familiar with Python? <laughs> Almost everybody. Who is familiar with JVM languages? Good, two, okay, we are still going, doing good. Who is familiar with R? Ah, okay, good. I don't like these two, but <laughs> so don't take it personal. Okay, so um, at, at first I was thinking this presentation more about how I don't like Python but then I realized that you deserve better than that, so I, I, I try to stay away, stay away from that. So, the, the challenges we, we face every day, the, as the company and the product. So, we need our algorithms to be accurate, okay? Because it's, it's already a very competitive domain, and, and accuracy is one of our selling points. But, this high accuracy should be on the big data. So, if you go for very complex models, to do very complex modeling, then they will probably not, will not scale. So we have customers in Singtel, which is three million city, uh, right? It's three million population almost. Uh, but when we go to Australia, 
nothing scales. <laughs> okay, so we have to always keep that in mind. We, we try to use modern architectures. We have very hipster engineers, developers. We, we use containers, we use uh, microservices. We try to combine them on, on APIs. But then it's the enterprise world. So um, uh, for, for example, we, we try to dockerize everything because the environment always changes, right? And then when I, I went for a deployment in a telco operator. It's, it's almost as strict as, as banks, if, if not more. And, and they say that they, they generally say that, yeah, give us the war WAR package. <laughs> and uh, do you all, all remember WAR, what AR is? No? OK, you, you don't have to. It's, it's already, uh, it's, this time has passed. But um, in, in one deployment, for example, I went for, we, 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 had, we packaged everything. We had zip files, we have dockers, we have uh, algorithms running on there. We, we, we went with USB, and they said, yeah, you, you, can, you can work here. OK, we, we opened the computer. Then we plugged in the USB. Then they said, no, you cannot copy anything to the servers. OK, but how are we going to deploy there? Right? OK, you have to email us, and then we will put it there. OK, we, we give the USB. It's, it's around 2 gigs, maybe 3 gigs, because of the Docker containers. They said, OK, we can load them in, in two, one week. But what's, 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 what's happening? Right? They said they, they have the, the bandwidth limitation. The, the IT department itself has a bandwidth limitation to the production server. So they cannot, co the, the copying of three gigabytes files, three gig files takes one week. So they had to find a loop around and then stuff like that. So it's, the enterprise environment is, 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 is a mess, is a hell. I, I hope you don't have to work on those environments. So as, as a data scientist, um, my boss sometimes comes to me and says, yeah, we have this data. Let, let's explore it. Let, let's, let, let's science the uh, heck out of it. OK, I, I auto censor. Uh, OK, I, I, have Py, I have Pandas, I have uh, NumPy, SciPy. I can do run algorithms on that. Then they say, yeah, but you cannot download the data. Right? <laughs> it, it has to be on the server. OK, I can put it on the server. Yeah, but you cannot download from HDFS. It has to stay on the HDFS. So uh, it doesn't happen every day. Uh, hopefully or, or thankfully, but it, it can happen, and we have to be, be ready for this. Then, then we use exploratory algorithms, right? It's, it's, the, it's the same thing. We, we, I, I have the perfect algorithm for this. Uh, and I, I say, okay, I can use it. I can develop on a sample data. And uh, we, we have to deploy it, so, so they come to me. Okay, we have this data. They want these results. Can you do, do it? I said, okay. It has to be quick. We have to deliver it one, one week later. OK, I, I develop something, put it. Then they put an, Then they say that it's an SLA. Do you know what SLA is? It's service level agreement, which means you have to maintain it uh, one year or, or a certain period of time. And then th those dirty code goes into a two million or multi-million dollar project as a small feature because our sales team is, is very aggressive. Hopefully, this doesn't happen. Uh, thankful this does not, uh, this doesn't happen much anymore. But this is something something we have to challenge. So uh, our entire stack is has to be scalable. So we have the JVM, we have the Spark Apache Hadoop framework, and when we try to work with data, sometimes we need an algorithm from the product. Right? It can be a data cleaning algorithm, data aggregation algorithm, or more complex algorithms. But when we run with or work with Python. But we realized that, that that perfect app that we want to use, the perfect function is in Java. So it's, it's very difficult to combine both of them. Oh, and sometimes we are lucky enough so that we can download the data, we can have a sample, we can work with, with, with a Python, with a team, and then we can work on, on Python notebooks. Right? And, and since it's a team, we can, let's say, we can work together. We, we use GitHub for, for collaboration, and there's a conflict. Have you ever tried to clean a conflict, uh, a Git conflict with a notebook? It's, it's, it's hell because it's in JSON format. It, it, it converts to text. So if working with, with some other people on Python notebooks, I, I find it very hard. So I just copy paste everything it's, and it becomes unmaintainable. So uh, these are some of the challenges that we have to face to, to develop a scalable data science product. Right. I, 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 I'm sure you, you face some of them in some days. I, I hope you don't. But if, if you are facing these kind of things, uh, it's, it's very hard to swing between uh, JVM languages, Hadoop, and then Python, at least for us. And I also don't like Python that much, so it's <laughs> I may be a little bit exaggerating. Okay. So when we were facing this, as I said, last year, I two years ago, I uh, in 
I was introduced to the Zeppelin. Um, it's, it's an Apache project. And di did you already hear about this? Anybody? OK. OK. So it's, um, it, as, as I said, it, it ticks to all the right boxes that, that I, I had, had problems with. OK. Uh, I, I tried it two years ago. It was 0 0.6, which was pretty unstable and was not capable. But the, the latest version is 7.3, which we use almost every day in, in not production, but almost production. So it's still a notebook, uh, like IPython notebooks, Jupyter notebooks. So it's, it's a familiar environment. It works on cluster. So um, it can work with our production data, with our staging data, and the, the users don't have to maintain it. And it's, it's always at the same place. It's, it's multilingual. You don't stuck with one language, which actually the premise of, of Jupyter is three languages. but. Uh, I don't think anybody uses other than Python. Uh, and having multilingual means m more people can, can work on that. Now I can show you some code. Okay. Uh, this is the, the welcome screen. Okay. And I can create a new node. I give the name for Seja. We can already have a directory structure. Uh, Presentation. Okay, so this is the screen which uh, um, welcomes you. It's similar to Jupyter notebooks, as you can see. So you can see uh, it's, it's a little bit more fancy, maybe. <laughs> uh, so we 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 have standard uh, buttons running running the paragraphs. We we have an access to the, the all of the notebooks. It's it's still an engineering product, so it, it keeps everything in one place. Uh, we have some kind of version control. It's not very mature, but it's there. Okay. Without further ado, let let me start with something very basic. Right. Okay. Three plus five, and run this paragraph. Uh, this this code has has been run on on our servers, on our clusters, and I, I get the result. Okay. Three plus five is eight. Do you recognize this language? Anybody? It's it's Scala output. Okay, uh, so the, the default is is Scala here. I can go for Python. Okay, three plus five, and run it again. And this is the same output from Python. As you can see, Scala is already faster here. No, I'm just making things up. <laughs> okay, uh, I can go for SQL. Okay, select three plus Five. Um, made a few paragraphs here. Okay, okay, we get some results. It's still eight. <laughs> no, no changes here. I can go for R. Three plus five. Run it. Okay, and this is the R output. Uh, uh, until here, it's it's all Spark basically because all of these languages are, are um, supported by Spark, so we are still good. I can go for SH, and I can go for three plus five. Okay, and here this is the shell command. I just ran a shell command on our cluster. Okay, uh, I can go for MD. Uh, it's eight. <laughs> So it, it still supports uh, Markdown. Maybe put like this, maybe three plus five is eight. Okay. So um, it, it supports multiple languages, and it gives you a great flexibility when you have a heterogeneous team. You, everybody can can work on the same uh, notebook and then do work with the same same data. Uh, the, the interpreters, the, these are all called interpreters, and the supported interpreters are here. Uh, it's, it's Spark, MD, AngularJS. Uh, I'm not, I, I, I can even write uh, Java, JavaScript here. And uh, Python, PS, uh, PSQL, PostgreSQL, JDBC. So it's, it's a very long list. OK. So um, another advantage we 
I was ha very happy with Zeppelin is the built-in support for interactive graphics. So uh, let me go to the demo very quickly. OK, let me hide this. OK. Um, so here I create a data frame in Spark. OK, it has, has two, three columns. And I create a category and then put the years. Then I say just Z, Z show. When I run it and enable the output again, it has this very nice plugin, Zeppelin. I think they use a library, but I don't know which one it is. I can look the data in a table format as a bar chart, as a pie chart, line chart, and with, with uh, Zeppelin 8, it goes even to the, the, that there are plugins for it. So this, this is very important because when I start with a data science process, I always tend to look for histograms right? I, to, to, to get the distribution of it. And then before, before using this, I was going for Spark Shell, which, which is very easy to use. Then I create the data, save it on the HDFS, download the data on the cluster, that then onto my machine, put it into Excel, open it. It's, it's, it's a hell of a process. But, but here, I just say Zish, that show, and it shows me the data. Um, if your file is in CSV, the, the command is something like this. You can go directly for SQL. Uh, the SQL can read CSV files, although a little bit slow. Uh, and th th these bars are coming from the YARN cluster. Oh, I, I hide the. So this, this is, this is some, some kind of data. Uh, it's, it's limited to 10,000 lines. So bar chart, we can still see the bar chart. These are JavaScript generated. So it's, it's uh, running in your, living in your browser. If, if your data is not structured yet, um, you can go for more uh, customized format. L let me go through this thing. So I just read the file in, in Spark. I split the by, by uh, commas. And I just say that the uh, count the first column. It's, it's a word counting example, basically. Then I, I gather it to a DF and then show it. I, I don't want to run it now. It's my, my chart is here. I are, oh, time is important. If you want to go for your standard things, you can also use matplotlib. And you can. Plot your uh, ordinary mat plots. Uh, mat plots. Uh, mat plots. Okay. Um, if your data is not structured in any way, so this thing, this this uh, plugin, can support custom output. So here, this is in in R. If you if your first line of output is a percentage table, and if it's tab separated. I know it's a little bit hard to read, but it's name, tab, size, ta uh, the new line, small, tab, 100. It, it, it can plot anything in a tab-separated format. Okay, uh, And if you really want to go for it, uh, it supports also external libraries. Uh, for example, Google Viz is a print, uh, R library. It, it can plot it. Uh, it can, can show you the, the R plots. They are all running on server, and, and the, the output is here. Okay, uh, so this this, this multilingual T has a very good, big advantage when you work in a team because everything is in one place. Everybody can work on the same data and then just prepare one big uh, notebook. Okay, so as I said, our, our product is in JVM, and we sometimes have to use our own libraries. And since Spark is also or, or uh, Spark is on also JVM, and uh, Zeppelin is a citizen of that JVM world. We can use our libraries. And there's a seamless transition between languages. I didn't show you that one. You, I can run multiple languages, but I can also pass data between languages. And it supports multi-user. Uh, OK, let me let, let, um, first turn to columns. OK. So here, I import a library, a, a function from our own library. It's, it's string parser. It's a very basic one. I uh, read a data file. 
the path is hidden here, so <laughs> it's confidential. Uh, then I, I get a sample and I run my parser function on it, right? And it, I don't want to run them currently, so it imports it and it creates my RDD, which is a Spark data structure. Then I get this visits, okay? And it's still on the Scala Spark, then map, and this is kind of a word count. I'm just creating a histogram of sizes, okay? And this is histar uh, variable, and a hist is the, the in, in data frame format. You can, you can see the variables here. Then uh, I say z show, which I showed you before. I, I show this in, in Scala. I put these two variables into z. Z is the Zeppelin uh, mediator, I can say. And then I register this uh, table as a SQL table. Then I can go to SQL. I just say select uh, asterisk from histott, which is this one, histotem table. And I can do the filtering on top of the, the data set I prepared in Scala. I can go to R and I can run SQL script here, but you can also go for native languages. Then you can work on this data in R. They're the same data I prepared in, in Scala. I can go to Python. Uh, this is Python, this is PySpark. I can read the data frame into Python and run my uh, Python code. It's, it's a very simple example, but you can, you can do more complex stuff, of course. Uh, another thing, so, so un until here, it's, it's still data frames, it's integers and stuff, right? I can have a custom class in Scala, in JVM languages. I can write a converter, it's kind of a serializer for that format. I can put it into Z, and in PySpark, I can read Java uh, classes, and then work on them. Okay, so this, 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 these arrays are now Python arrays. So um, it's, it's all Spark, basically. This is all thanks to Spark, but giving this, this, this kind of an interface really improves the, the collaboration because anybody can, can work with the same data, just, just copy paste it or, or work on the same, same notebook, uh, even though they come from different uh, experience, different languages. Um, okay, so security is, is a concern, of course, and the security of Zeppelin is done by Shiro. Uh, I don't know whether, it's, it's an Apache project, so currently, we are using per user basis, but it supports LDAP and uh, Active Directory things. And since the data never leaves the, the cluster, the security is, is always good. Uh, not always good, but it's good enough. The, the part I love most about Zeppelin, it's, uh, it's a brainchild of an engineering thinking. Okay, so so J Jupyter is mostly used by uh, scientists data scientist or, or physicist or, or chem chemist. So it's, it's very easy to use, it's very stable. Um, it, um, it's very convenient to use. Zeppelin, it not, uh, Zeppelin is not any of them, okay? It's, it's kind of complex, but you, it's, it's very customizable. I will show you one example. Uh, as I said, we also work on uh, mobility intelligence, okay? I, I, hit the, the most of the boxes here for now. Uh, but let, let me show you this. So I collected some data from MRT lines. Okay, I go there and then ch check the MRT lines. So this is our, our custom trajectory code. And I put them on top of a map. So, so these lines are, are drawn by our uh, system. So how this works is, um, Let me make it a little bit smaller so that you can see. So I prepare the data in, in Scala, Spark, okay, here, uh, on, on, on this box. I can even select which, which date or, or what, what kind of data I'm working on. And I can just go there, run this thing, and it shows this thing on JavaScript. So the, the point here you don't see is, uh, Zeppelin does not have a built-in support for maps. Okay, so this, this is all done by me. Uh, not by me, but this is some, something I did. So what, what, what happens here is uh, I have this, I had to write this paragraph, which 
basically creates a uh, JavaScript code. Okay? And then because of the, the interpreters on the uh, in front, so it can support JavaScript, I can turn my Scala code into, okay, I think I'm out of time. Maybe, maybe two minutes more to, to wrap up. Uh, I can write my own scripts to convert Scala code, Spark code, or Python code into JavaScript, and I can extend the functionality here. So this is this this was groundbreaking for me, and in, in both in terms of Zeppelin and doing my data analysis because we always work with uh, geodata. Uh, that, that's that's our job, but putting the, the data from HDFS or, or visualizing the data in HDFS is, is, is very difficult. And then this creates that, the, the, the Zeppelin creates that, that bridge for me and it makes our processes much faster. Uh, so you, ca you can go, uh, and also you can see it's, it supports input fields, so you can, oh, okay, it doesn't work. Let me change the subject, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, you, 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 can, you can go crazy with it, that's, the, that's, the, that's a good point. Okay, I showed you the examples already. Configuration is a little bit hard, so uh, because it it's works on the cluster side, right? It works on HDFS. It has to be secure. It has it it tries to combine many things. So configuration is not straightforward, but it's doable. Uh, we we had to write some scripts uh, to give to the user, so they just have to log in to the system they have access to, and write write two scripts, and then we we create the uh, hashed passwords for them. So that part is a little bit uh, still manual. Uh, and we have to add the jars you use. So it, it also supports Maven. So it, if, if it's a public uh, Java and if you have internet connection, you can also always down download. Uh, so some, some challenges, it's, it's very complex. What, what, what it tries to do is complex. So it's, I think it's okay, but it kind of affects the stability. So we cannot Show it, it supports report kind of thing, as you saw that the paragraphs are resizable, but we cannot use it for production yet, or we cannot show it to the customers yet. Uh, it requires connection to the cluster, which is a downside because before coming here, I had to set up VPN, I had to make sure that there's no load on cluster. So uh, it's, it's a, it's a trade-off. Uh, yeah, cluster load can be a problem. But thanks to this, we have 15 people in different five different countries working on data science problems in, in different combinations um, and, and various combinations and we, ca we can still develop uh, data science product f from exploration to the, to the deployment side uh, as a team. So everything we do uh, in, in this framework are testable because it's, it's still Java code, Scala code. We can just write the test, package it, and then we can deploy. Yeah, so thanks. This is my contact information. Yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Yes. Sorry, so um, after the using, um, accessing the, um, what is this called, the cluster, cluster mm -hmm. how do you exchange data for uh, all the different um, languages? Um, so, because it's using Spark, Spark has an interior representation of, of uh, the, the data. So it, it converts everything to back to JVM related format anyway. So we, we leverage Spark on that part. But uh, Zeppelin itself also gives us a, a, a context called Z. And we can just put and get the data like a, a frame. So here, for example, I put it as Z. Uh, the, the different languages not always support the same same data, but if you have a serializer that converts it to primitive types, integers, double strings, all of the languages can understand. Okay. So it may require a little bit of extra work, but it's it's worth the effort. Generally. This works locally within the browser. Or uh, no, no, it's, it's uh, everything you see is, is run in the cluster. Oh, it's, so you actually, but that will be quite. That's but I, I, I run I run most of the examples on the cluster already oh. so you so it's if, if it's a small data the latency is not that much but if it's a big 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 data data you cannot run on your computer anyway okay thank you very much